At a theological seminary called Hebrew Union College, a man broods over bits of pottery gathered on a hillside 6,000 miles away. He checks them as you check a calendar, pinning down the date when they were made. This one is Iron Age, that one Middle Bronze. Nelson Glick college president and biblical archaeologist. Discoverer of King Solomon's copper mines, explorer of the River Jordan, finder of the boundaries of the ancient kingdoms of Edom and Moab. A scientist who has spent half a lifetime digging in the territory of Genesis and the Book of Kings along with England's Sir Flinders Petrie, America's William Albright, Francis Pere Abel, and Israel's Professor Sukenik. The blueprint is the Bible. Buried in its verses are a thousand mysterious clues, telling of metal sleeping in the mountains, but never saying just where. Telling of Moses in the wilderness, but leaving us to search for the road he traveled. Moses swept across the stage of history is a stretch of parched hills called the Negev. And there were those who claimed it had been an empty desert since the beginning of time. said to Abraham, Get thee out of thy country unto a land that I will show thee, and I will make of thee a great nation. And Abraham journeyed west out of Mesopotamia, and this is what greeted his eyes, the Negev, the wilderness of Zin. Along this way in the time of the pharaohs ran one of the most important trade routes in the world. Across these dry riverbeds and dusty slopes poured great caravans bringing spices from South Arabia, silver from Asia Minor, and purple dyes from the cities of Phoenicia. Now comes an archaeologist from Ohio and a rugged crew of young Israelis to hunt down the buried ruins of every highway and city, every farm and fortress from the years of Abraham to the age of Jesus.
It seems peaceful out here in the wilderness. Yeah, but don't let the quiet fool you. The Sinai border is less than five kilometers away. There's always a chance of assassins slipping along in the shadows. Around here, if you hear a whistle in the air, brother, it's not a bird. The first night, under the desert sky, there's a kind of fever that grips you. You lie there on the silent stones that bear the signature of the book of Genesis. This is no ordinary wilderness. Across this lonely valley came Moses on the journey that led from the burning bush to the Ten Commandments. It was here men first saw a vision of God that shaped the Psalms of David. This was the birthplace of a thousand holy legends that inspired men down the ages. The legend of Lot turned to a pillar of salt, appearing in Byzantine mosaics of the sixth century. The story of Samson and the lion, appearing in German woodcuts of the Middle Ages. The legend of Jonah and the whale, turning up in a Persian miniature of the 14th century. There is no continent on earth that hasn't been touched by the stories of the men who crossed this wilderness. have a saying, he who has never awakened in the desert has never awakened. You open your eyes and the air is like mountain wine. Cooking breakfast, you find yourself thinking, were there really villages here once? Where did they find the water? From the ends of Israel, these men have come to search for the answer. And that one on the left by the fire, that's Israel Omri, maintenance man with the Tel Aviv Power Company. A cocky adventurer with a talent for tall stories, taking a leave from his job to come down and serve as expedition scout and map maker. Another member of the crew, Joe Carmel, born in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, working now as a wheat farmer in a kibbutz on the Sinai border. His hobby, archaeology. His wife, a school teacher, his first child, just six months old. Evram Bronstein, who came from Bulgaria to a crumbling old studio in Jaffa, expert wrestler, who dreams of going to study painting in Paris. It isn't like the expeditions in the romance stories. They won't be stumbling on any fabulous lost cities. They won't be digging up any golden temples. In the days of antiquity, it was slaves who built the monuments. But the wilderness Hebrews were a proud and independent people. Their philosophy being out of Leviticus. Proclaim liberty throughout the land and unto all the inhabitants thereof. What they look for is a dim track that appears like nothing to the casual eye, but turns out to be an ancient roadway. What they look for is a heap of broken stones that was once a simple house. What they look for are the precious bits of pottery. The museums display the statues and the coins, but it's the little fragments they call sherds 
that are the real treasures. Wood decays, linen turns to dust, metal corrodes into a rusty stain. But somehow, these splinters of fired clay seem to endure forever. An archaeologist can glance at a piece smaller than his thumb and tell the age when it was made with less error than a hundred years in a thousand. Every ancient site has traces of pottery. From a few fragments, a scientist can work out the shape of the entire object, whether it was imported or domestic, whether it was used for cooking, drinking, storing grain. The sherd is the small key that can unlock the enormous door. The second week in the field, they make one of those rare finds. Even in the blazing heat, a man from Ohio feels a chill go down his spine and thinks, 4,000 years ago, one of my fathers held this in his hand. And Abraham rose up early and took bread and a jug of water and gave it to Hagar and sent her away. And she wandered in the wilderness, and the water was spent. And she sat down and said, let me not see the death of the child. And the angel of God called to Hagar out of heaven, fear not, arise, lift up the lad, for I will make of him a great nation. Sit in the crumbling doorway of a house that dates back to the time of the patriarchs. The little details of daily life seem to come alive. You imagine at twilight. And see your ancient ancestor coming home from the long day watching his flocks. As the hot days go by, they track down the ancient sites, finding them by the dozen faint but telltale marks on the landscape. By clues picked up from Bedouin tribesmen, one by one record them on the map. An Iron Age fortress built by the Kingdom of Judah, a milestone left by the Roman legions. The evidence of the stones bearing proof that in the days of antiquity, the Negev was neither a desert nor a wilderness. Day by day, fill in the blank spaces on the map until there are more than 400 ancient sites. Signs of human habitation dating back 20,000 years and continuing up past the time of Caesar. They stretch in a rough line, marking out the great highway used by civilization after civilization. The route followed by Moses on the Exodus. The road 
road cutting through the mountains along the Wadi Araba, a great gorge torn out by some prehistoric convulsion. The home of King Solomon's mines where the earth is still thick with copper ore. Here are the riches hinted at in Deuteronomy. For the Lord thy God bringeth thee into a good land, whose stones are iron, and out of whose hills thou mayest dig copper. Here they roasted it and left the slag, and took it on to be smelted in the great refineries at Etsy and Geber on the rim of the Red Sea. The expedition has been four summer weeks in the Negev now. Here at the edge of the Red Sea was the forge where the prophets hammered out the soul of Israel. Each week on the Sabbath, they read from the Bible, searching out the passages that speak of the wilderness. Something about the very landscape, the pure sky, the ageless stone hills makes a man ask himself the most profound question. Who am I? What made me? Here beyond the Red Sea was the place where man saw the first glimmerings of the dawn of conscience. The place where man began to turn away from the pagan idols to turn from the golden calf to the Ten Commandments. The laws that were to lead us to the principles of love and justice. The teachings of Isaiah and Jeremiah. Equality. Compassion for the poor. Protection for the stranger. Through the strained, weary days of work, they begin to come upon clues of an amazing civilization. Byzantine ruins pointing back to those who came before. The Nabataeans. Everywhere the Nabataeans passed, they left a touch of art. Here among the burned hills, you suddenly come upon a metropolis, the great ancient city of Abda. It was the Nabataeans who laid its foundation. A people who conquered the desert by becoming brilliant water engineers. by using the soil itself as a sponge to hold the rare and violent rains. They didn't fight the wilderness, they studied it and learned its secrets. And in return, it gave them survival. So now they know. After five years of searching, now at last they have the proof that in times gone by, Nations flourished in the Negev. The key turns in the lock and the great door swings open. The pioneers begin to stream into this new frontier. Every two months, a new settlement built on the ruins of the homes of their ancestors. Taking their water from underground springs that were used in the time of Abraham. From catch basins built by the Nabataeans. After 2,000 years, they gather in the crops once more fulfilling the promise of the Lord to Abraham and Moses. Behold, this is the land which I swore unto you, to give to your children, 
for an inheritance.